Welcome back everyone, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me today to this new episode of Music with Nick. We got a super cool idea that I, I don't know, I mean, I I, I came up with it, but <laughs> JK said, yeah, challenge, uh, challenge accepted. And um, he took it among him to find out about some uh, rock artists or just more musicians, you know, who used to be teachers and became super famous musicians rockers etc so that's the uh that's the um the theme of this marathon and i just looked at some uh by myself i mean there is a pretty good list you know on 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 the internet and uh but most of them i just wanted to do i we have you know this problem with the record company so we just want to be sure that we have enough artists that that also you know are under warner brothers because basically yeah um that's the only you know record company that doesn't really block you know these videos so it's always nice to incorporate them into our marathons so um we're gonna go with todd run uh rungren because he is um with warner um He's going to be like the extra, but I'm going to uh, read you all, all the information that about these teachers. Well, this is fun. So it, sa it says here, Nick, I accepted your challenge and did, did some research. These are all former teachers who became rock stars. Um, and even he says, I'm a little bit worried about this one, you know, because it's all like these famous people, very, very famous artists. Um, that uh and they're all you know with universal and universal is just very like they like to block so um so yeah so let's let's go over them and then uh, i'll eventually do just like two songs by todd and that way we if it gets blocked we'll be good so uh the first one we're going to talk about is um sting um let's see so sting taught english in secondary school which is uh which this song references, all right? So we're going to do um, Don't Stand uh, So Close to Me by The Police. That's the first one. And then uh, Queen, we're talking about Brian May, All I Want, uh, I Want It All by Queen. Brian May taught math in secondary school, all right? Well, he's like a rock scientist. Like, um, not, <laughs> not a rock scientist. Uh, he's a um, uh, space space engine engineer or something um so yeah something like that i don't i don't really i'm not really sure but i'll look it up right now um then shell crow all i want to do oh wow shell crow she taught music in elementary school all right cool um i love her then mark knopfler one of my favorite guitar players taught english in college uh we're gonna do lady writer by dire straits nice and then um we're going to do Brian Ferry, Tart Art in Secondary School. We're going to do Love is the Drug by Brian, uh, by Roxy Music, Brian Ferry. So uh, there's some others. Um, so apparently, um, um, jo I mean, Joe Satriani, I, I knew he was a teacher. He he taught Steve Vai and Kirk Hammett, but I didn't know that he actually taught, you know, professionally. Um, we got Dennis De Young. He, he he was a math teacher. Um, that said, Joe has always been an amazing guitarist, and before he went professional with his skills, he taught others how to play. All right. Um, so Johnny spent ten years in Westbury, New York, and Berkeley, teaching the instruments. So he was a music teacher. Wow. So he, a queen guitarist, is probably one of the smartest rockers out there. He has a PhD in astrophysics. Holy moly, yeah. Okay. And um, we have some other ones here. So Sting, Gene Simmons of Kiss, he used to, um, he used to teach um, Spanish. Wow. In uh, sixth grade, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, we got some, we got some people, you know, but they're all, all these people are with, um, record companies that are not Warner Brothers. So uh, I think we're just going to go with Todd 
Rundgren. Um, actually, I got some information about Todd. Let's see. Um, he did give me the information. Okay. He taught briefly at the FU University after becoming a star. Okay. All right. So that's still, you know, he was a teacher. Uh, Todd. All right. Cool. So yeah, let's uh, let's start. Um, give me just one moment, and I'll pull up the music. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you so much again, JK, for you know making this marathon happen. Um, it, I guess it was just in one video where I said, "Oh, this would be, a, I think, like a fun idea," and JK ran with it, and here we are. <laughs> so let's have some 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 fun. So we're gonna start uh, with the police. Don't stand so close to me. Uh, I didn't mention the album. This is called uh, Senyata Mondada from 1980. All right, so here we go. The police first. Um, all right, enjoy. Let's go. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. It, I don't know why it was already started. Um, let's start from the finish. Reggae. So cool. Young teacher, the subject of school girl fantasy. She wants me so badly, knows what she wants to be. Inside her, there's longing, this girl's in. So close now, this girl is half his age. Okay, so JK, like he warned me about the lyrics, and yes, I totally get it. Um, they are very, um, I mean, yes, and, and that's crazy because 1980, I don't know how people took it back then. I think the same way people t take it right now, um, it's a big problem, you know, uh, it is a problem, you know, and it's been going on for, I think, forever, um, you know, so... What is my opinion on it? I think it's not good. <laughs> it's like I think there should be a big boundary between students and teachers. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost like it's a no brainer. Like who would be for this, you know? So um, it's very ballsy of, uh, of, of them, you know, to make a song about it. But I mean, it is, you know, reality. So yeah. Uh, JK was like, yeah, you know, um, there's 
people are going to be, you know, I mean, but pe you guys have heard this before. So let me know what you think about the lyrics, you know, and then uh, let's open up that can of worms. You know, I think there's always good conversations in the comment section, especially when it's about stuff like this. Uh, I don't condone this at all, you know, like these, um, I've seen it in movies, I've seen it in, I've read it in books, I've seen it on the news, you know, I don't, uh, I'm, I don't stand for this at all. I think it's very disturbing and uh, I think children should be children and teachers should be teachers teaching the children and that's it, you know. But yeah, so the lyrics go obviously way beyond that. You know, so, but yeah, I don't, I don't stand for that at all. I, I didn't really know what JK meant when he was like, oh, just like, he didn't really tell me like, oh, the lyric, he, he's just said something about the lyrics. I've been very, very careful here reading the lyrics. And I was like, because otherwise I've been like, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes I don't pay attention to the lyrics very much. As a listener, I'm always following the beat and, oh, what is he doing here? And what kind of chord progression? And is he opening up? And what is he doing? You know, and that kind of stuff. So I would have been just like, you know, like one of the best examples still to this day too was Rush with Red Sector A. And we were both like, oh, my God, it's so good. The rhythm is so. And the other one was with Luca. We were like. You know, singing and laughing and pe and yet it's it is about you know child abuse and but we didn't know you know we were just focused on the music so a lot of people have given us of course flack for that but I get it I guess Jake was just looking out for me like don't be too happy because uh, <laughs> so yeah I I I'm really thankful about that so let's continue let's let's listen to the rest of the song but I mean just music wise the police is very uh. I've always loved their style. I love the reggae kind of like beat to it. It's just very good music, you know, uh, the drummer, the bass player, Sting, the guitar player, everything just works as a trio. They're very, very efficient. And obviously everybody knows them because of their uh, great music and their lyrics. And I think this was very thought provoking back in the day, you know, and it still is. All right, let's let's continue. Very good. Very good song. I'm sure a lot of people don't even know what the song is about. Like the majority, like, um, it's, it's so funny. Like even, uh, Alexa's dad, um, when he, when we played the Luca song, he's like, Oh, I've always loved that song. <laughs> and I'm like, Shh. I mean, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with loving a song, but he's always like, I've always liked the song because it's, it's very it sounds so good, you know, it sounds very happy. And then yet it has this very dark undertone. So, um, and I, I've read about even now since we did, when we did the song, I was like, okay, I want to know what happened here. And then it's basically, it's based on a true story, but basically, um, the kid Luca was just a kid that just seemed sad. And she kind of like made up the whole, uh, story about him being, you know, 
uh, abused by his parents, you know, like hit and stuff. And um, yeah, so I guess she made it a little worse than it actually was. But I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously her her right to write whatever she wants that lyrics can be whatever you want him to be you know so i guess she made it a little bit more um tragic than it originally was that's what i read about the about the kid you know the luca kid and um all right so let's continue um so actually you know like so what we just heard um the don't stand so close to me there's another marathon but maybe we shouldn't touch on that because i there's another one called uh hot for teacher by van halen there's all these songs about this specific um you know um circumstance that occurs you know so but i think we should stay clear of that you know i don't want to get that would be a little bit too. It would be asking for for trouble, you know. So I I think that's I'm 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 good. Um, this channel is about music, and you know, that's why I'm always like, you know, I love instrumental music, you know. I don't, I don't get into trouble because I didn't pay attention to the lyrics. Okay, so Queen is next. I mean, what's there to to say about Queen? Legendary. Um, I want it all. Uh, this is from. The Miracle from 1989. And uh, I do know a lot of Queen because I had the greatest hit CD. But what happened is that I got into the real progressive Queen from the 70s. And I didn't know how good they were. For me, Queen was always an amazing band to listen to. I think my first time uh, was my first exposure to Queen was, I think, the movie Wayne's World. You know, when they're dry. I was still like I was like i don't know how old i was i have no idea like maybe six or seven when that movie came out i i really don't know uh maybe even younger um and um and i remember when they're driving in the car and then uh bohemian rhapsody comes on and they're mama mia mama mia so it was very funny and i was like what is this band like and that's when i discovered queen uh, but I didn't know. I always thought they were more an operatic kind of thing, you know, and Freddie Mercury was this larger than life personality. But I didn't know they were also prog rockers, you know, like with their with their older stuff being really, really complex music. So this is, I think, when in the 80s, you know, um, like Radio Gaga and stuff like that. I love that song. When I think it's one of my favorite songs about them. So I, I don't know if this is from the... Maybe if this was on the greatest hits, I'll tell you guys so. But yeah, this is um, Brian May and Freddie Mercury and um, Queen. Here we go.
so good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I've heard it before. Um, it doesn't ring a bell, but it's... Man, the Freddie Mercury's voice is so... It's so good. It's so powerful. And it's... He can do whatever he wants with it. I love it, you know. Every, and anything he does is good. But yeah, it's really cool. It sounds almost... I don't know. It reminds me of Rocky. It does... Maybe that dune, I don't know, something, it, it does remind me of Rocky, I don't know why. Um, all right, yeah, this is a great song, I love it, <laughs> pretty good. And I was reading the lyrics, and then I was like, I'm not paying any attention to the music. I'm just gonna let the lyrics go in this one, yeah, so... What a good song. I can, this one, I'm sure like the whole, I want it all. And the stadium must have been insane to witness. You know, it's a cool song for people to participate. You know, great solo work there. You know, great guitar work by Brian May. Wow. That's crazy that he had a PhD in astrophysics and decided to be a rocker. I thank God he did, you know. Um, it's a sad thing. I just like, I, it's so weird yesterday when, when I got this, um, request by JK, I was just on YouTube random, randomly on YouTube, you know, uh, I think I was editing some other video and then I saw this video. It said, I'm done. I'm done. And it says teacher talks about, you know, and then I heard this video. I was so saddened because this teacher was like, I'm done with teaching. And they told me, become a teacher. You know, you're going to change the world. And and I guess that must have been the case. You know, I guess this guy was like my my age or something, maybe a little younger, maybe a little older. I don't know. But he was so sad. And he was like, you know, I'm going to I'm going to have to stop teaching. Like I spent six years um. Well, I think he said I spent 10 years, like, I guess he just finished school and then he, you know, studied to become a teacher. He has a master's degree and he's like, it's impossible nowadays. You know, there is no respect for us. We are basically just babysitters and, um, and, but he was really, he was not trying to come off as like, he was just saying, oh, eh. no, he was really like, I'm so disappointed. I really loved my, loved my job, but there's no respect. Um, the kids are just like literally 
there's no we can't say anything to them it's like it was so bad i was like i was shocked at the video i would even i would love to play the video and react to it you know with alexia what she thinks and because i remember we had the same teachers like alexia and i we went to the same school but in different years but we had the same teachers there were still when when i when i had those teachers uh they they stayed um they they all stayed there and then alexia went to school um into like you know seventh eighth ninth grade in high school um so middle school and high school and she we so we have the same memories of our teachers and we know who was like more threatening who was nicer you know that kind of stuff so that's kind of so cool to share because we can literally talk about our school years and be totally relate to each other even though we were not together um at the same moment in the, in the in the school but we went to the same uh school so and and i remember that i respected my teachers i was intimidated by my teachers you know it was just such a different time um and now basically teachers are being mocked are being made fun of uh teachers have no power teachers have no authority um they're just you know but they get no respect they get no respect from the students they don't get respect from the from the parents it's just so bad so that's the video that i watched right now of the situation and he's like i'm just gonna like not gonna go back and then people are like oh you're a teacher you know um uh you have it so good you get all those days off they can't even afford to have days off they have to go to summer school teach them during the summer they don't have enough money to go through thanksgiving so it's like it's crazy because we have these teachers we have these people that are dedicated to teach our kids you know and they don't make enough money and they have like and literally the guy was like i'm getting mentally ill like my my mental illness is off the charts because i'm always thinking about school when i have the day during the weekend i'm always working like i never have enough time so it sounds like a nightmare to be a teacher so i'm super sad that this is happening that people um in this line of work are not being respected you know it's horrible because i used to love my teachers i was maybe not the best student although i wasn't the worst either um but I was, I, at least I respected my teachers. When they came in in the morning, I was like, hey, you know, good morning. And we were excited. I, we were a close-knit school. Um, also, maybe that's the difference. I don't know. Uh, I, but I did went to public schools in Germany. I went to public schools in Mexico. And then I ended up in this private school in Mexico where Alexia went to as well. But... <sighs> We just loved our teachers, you know, I and mean, they were not like the nicest. We, we, we were not like, get, we, we went through like, I mean, we, if we were not paying attention or if we didn't do well, you know, we were not being, getting praise from our teachers. And now like what this teacher was talking about is that p pretty much students, they don't even have to pay attention. So the grades are like not even a thing they're just sitting there what he said is like they're on their phones you know sending each other memes no paying don't pay like not paying attention that they just sit there and basically sit through and uh they get yeah they'll get to the next grade like even though if they do nothing and he was like there's eight graders who have uh who read like second graders i was like oh my god you know so it's a big problem you know and we're gonna see i guess a big difference in just people and their in, in their education you know um because we had it like w w i mean my school years i can't say that they were easy you know that was challenging you know and then doing it in two languages at the same time that was also kind of cool because we had classes in english we had classes in spanish um you know um everything pretty much was in english and then there was a Spanish class and then there was subjects in Spanish. You could also take math in Spanish or you could take it in English, whatever you liked better. But, you know, yeah, it's just it's just sad. You know, I just wanted to talk, talk about that, that teachers now, especially high school and college, I think teachers don't have it like easy, you know. So 
I hope that changes. I hope there there's some enforce uh, that rules. Uh, some rules get enforced to so we can keep these people, you know, um, and also reward them with what they really deserve. You know, a teacher I think de deserves better pay than what they get f for what they do. All right, let's continue with our teachers marathon. And I was talking about teachers, I know. But so Shell Crow, um, uh, so Shell Crow, let's see, I kind of, uh, she taught music. Okay, music. So music, I guess it's, a, I guess, a little bit easier to teach. You know, I've taught music as well. Um, not in a school, just privately. And it's like, you know, it's challenging if the person doesn't have like, you know, any talent or, I mean, I know that's really harsh, but it's, it's a reality. There's people that don't have musical talent. They don't have a musical ear and you can play whatever you want. They won't hear it. They won't do it the same because they can't hear it. Um, so that's, it's a problem, it, but uh, I've, I haven't had students like that very often, maybe once or twice. And it's very frustrating because you can't teach them to be able to hear. They either hear or they don't. And that's just a thing, you know. Now, if they're very talent, if they're like very talented, then it's <laughs> you're very lucky because they're going to move very, very quickly. And then basically, basically, you will be like, OK, there's nothing else I can teach you um, after a couple of months or years, you know. Um, okay, so all, um, all I want, all I want to do is from Tuesday Night Music Club from 1993. I think I know this one. I must be honest. So let's go. But if not, I'll let you guys know. Hit it. This ain't no disco. It ain't no country club either. <laughs> this is L.A. All I want to do is have a little fun. Wonderful. Yeah, I've heard this before, but I've never really paid attention to anything. I just know that like I know um, I know this because actually my dad used to be uh, he's still I think he he had like this crush on on her and on her music and also because she came from blues and jazz her background, you know, so yeah, so I've heard this before, I guess in passing. Uh, I've never paid any attention to it, but she's really good. I le just love her attitude. The delivery is so good. And she's an excellent musician and only works with the best. You know? So, um, awesome. Really good. I'm not the only one. Oh, 
such a good song. It makes me a little bit sad, but not because of the lyrics. It just like, <clears throat> um, like as you know, I didn't have like the best relationship with my dad when I was younger, and um, but I did have like I think one or two weeks were like the best weeks of my life with him. Um, because I don't know. I guess we just finally bonded, but. I guess it was already too late um, when that happened, but it was very nice. And it's a very nice memory um, that I've always cherished. Um, so basically, my dad was living in, in, in L.A. Uh, and he was living at um, Marina del Rey or something. Yeah, Marina del Rey. And so when she was singing about the Santa, Santa, uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, well, he took me there and he showed me around Los Angeles and stuff like that. So, and that was just a great time because we went to, we, we went to music stores and, um, we were just like, kind of like hitting it off for the first time. That's like literally my, <laughs> I have one good memory with him when I was a child. He took me like to this go-kart, um, thing, you know, that was one time that I have a memory that we played together because he was never there. He didn't have time. He was just in his own world. And, uh, but that time, so he, he did, he was like, okay, come. And I don't know. It's just, yeah, Th that's just a, a very good memory because being in the music shops and looking at books and, you know, guitars and, you know, it was just a great time. We went to Venice beach and that's when Venice beach was still like, you know, I mean, I think that was, I don't know exactly what year it was, but it wasn't like as bad as it is now. It was already kind of weird. There was a lot of stuff that was like, whoa, you know, what's this, you know? Um, but it's a good memory, you know, I will always, I will, I'll never forget that memory. And since I had a video camera, I was filming everything. So I've, and I would, that's why it's so in, in embedded in my brain because I, I watched it so many times, you know, I watched it on video and uh, unfortunately all those tapes, my mom threw them away <laughs> by accident. I, I had like, I think three years of my life just on tape. I would film everything when I started, when I started to play, I would, I would uh, you know, uh, film my practice sessions and everything I used to do in Mexico, my old friends. And um, then my mom just threw, threw everything, everything away, like by accident. Since I moved out and I left all my stuff and she was like, what is this crap? Oh, garbage. You know, like, you know, that mentality. All my Star Wars stuff she gave away. <laughs> so sad. Uh, I had all the, like the, the old Star Wars, the Kenner, you know. Uh, figurines and you know spaceships and I guess I bought rebought everything in Lego version um, but those were really worth you know a lot of money and she also gave those away but you know parents sometimes they don't know and especially parents you know that are not you know they're old school you know they're like <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that was a good memory with my dad. That's what that I'll always cherish that. Um, even though he was not the best, you know, father. But hey, you know, that's what that's how it is. We choose our parents, you know, and that's what we get, and that's how we grow up, and they shape us in a certain way. And I am still very thankful, and I I've told him that before, and I I, I also told him, you know, I forgive everything bad you've ever done which was a lot you know it was a lot of negativity and a lot of just bad stuff you know so but i told him hey you know what we're done with this i forgive you and i love you and i'm very thankful and that's that always has made me feel very very good about everything and also about i'm i don't feel sorry for myself or i'm not mad at anyone it's very good it's very good to forgive you know, you won't forget because you can, but you, it's good to forgive and it's good to like right now what I have going on with my brother, it's very hard for me, but I've, I forgave him. We invited him to the wedding 
and he didn't want to but you know if you don't want to then i'm gonna take a step back and that's it you know I, at least we tried so okay let's continue with dire straits a lady winter this is from communique uh communique dire straits 1979 so this is literally the the album that came after their first debut the debut i've heard 200 300 500 times i'm sure this one i i tried to and i didn't really like it so let's see you know i saw uh, lady winter let's see if i've heard this before um i wouldn't remember i i just never went past the first tire streets i know a lot of people are going to be like oh i mean i can't believe you but i don't know i just there's so much other music that i was listening to i've always loved dire straits the first album i think it's a masterpiece he's amazing on it but this i think i tried and since i've never really bought it i already had the you know the opportunity just to stream it then you don't appreciate it as much, you know, if you have it physically and you're like, okay, I spent all this money. And then I remember I had a CDs that I bought and I hated. And then as more <laughs> you play them more often and then you fall in love with them. So maybe that's what I need here. So let's go with uh, Lady Winter. This sounds literally like the first album. It's the same style, the same, you know, country infused um, blues, you know. I love his guitar, like, work. I love his language, the way he uses chords and scales in a very specific way. I love the clean guitar that Mark uses. And the singing is also the same. It's literally like they recorded this right after their their debut sounds very good i i have to give this another chance this literally sounds like sultans of swing waterline water of love you know gallery uh the lions you know all these songs like i know it by heart the um the album um six blade knife you know everything um so yeah definitely gonna listen to this more closely so good all right she had all the brains in the pitting But she does not fit Rich old man, you know he'd call her a dead ringer. 
actually has the same chord progression and sold on those things. Like literally. Um, it's very close. Um, and he does like this, almost like this flamenco kind of like uh, uh, strumming, you know, that what gives Dire Straits its sound um, because he plays like with only with his fingers. Man, this is so good. These lines are so good. And um, I'll, I'll never forgive Steely Dan, you know. <laughs> I never forgive Donald and Walter for not, you know, for not appreciating um, his playing. Or maybe, I don't know what went wrong. I, I There's just the story, you know, that they didn't uh, like the way he worked with how they work. And then I'm happy he got paid, you know. Of what he got paid, I think around a million dollars for, and then they only used like he played like ten hours for them, you know, um, and they only used like I guess the intro, like time out of mind, um, and then there's a little like solo section, but it's like it's a missed opportunity. It's really like like what were you thinking? You had one of the best guitar players I know, and they have all all their guitar players are amazing that they ever used, but I mean Mark Knopfler, come on, you know. Um, but hey, me, I get it. You know, Donald and and Walter, they're very particular people. Maybe they didn't want it to sound so much like Dire Straits because that's the thing about Mark's playing. It instantly sounds like him, and it sounds very trademark. And maybe they didn't want to make it. Maybe this the, the song was sounded too much like Mark or Dire Straits, and maybe they didn't want that. You know, it's also you have to take into consideration there's a lot of ego going on in the studio especially with people like donald fagan i presume and walter becker and they they understood each other but maybe they were like hey you know you're gonna do exactly what we say you know and maybe mark was like okay well this is what i do and if you don't like it you you know you can i guess i don't know what went on it would be so cool if they really would talk about that a little bit more because I've looked on the on the internet and it's just like, yes, uh, he was there and I think he was there a couple of days. He went to the studio and stuff was just not happening. I, I don't know why, you know, and maybe because his style and there's some BS about because he didn't know how to read music. I mean, you don't everyone knows how to read at least a chart, you know, maybe like actual music. Why would you need to know how to read? music to be able to record like were they literally that they had the lines written out because if it's just charts chords everybody can read that you know so i don't know but uh I, I i don't get it you know i don't i don't know what went wrong because it's more about improvisation anyways you know and when it comes to steely dan uh i'll never get it but yeah missed opportunity definitely um Let's keep going. <laughs> I think I always talk about CD Dan when I talk about Mark Knopfler nowadays. Lady writer on the TV. She knew all about her history. You couldn't hardly write your name. I think I want just the same as Lady writer on the TV. Talk about the virgin man. Yeah, you know I'm talking about it. So good wonderful player wonderful musician i love everything about him everything um his playing his voice his compositions um 
I don't know what I I even know where I, I mean the last time I heard this album this was before the channel I was in a totally different headspace um I didn't have the time or it, it wouldn't take the time for different music I was listening to my jazz fusion stuff and I don't know and I just have this deep love for the first album because that's what I grew up with but I'm definitely going to listen to this like trust me um okay so um yeah, and um, what else did I want to say? Um, I think I wanted to say uh, if people are watching this and, and they're like, I get a, there's a lot of comments, which is so super sad because it's like, oh, if you just wouldn't talk so much, then I would listen. Like, please don't come on the channel. You know, don't, don't watch reaction videos because um, like... I get it, you know, some reactors are like, they listen to the song and then they talk, but, you know, it is actually, like, very dangerous um, for the channel not to interrupt the song because then you're not doing... There is this rule called fair use. So if you basically listen to a song, you pause it midway and you talk about the music and you could talk about the theory of the music, which I don't want to... I don't like to do that at all. Because a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? People, not everyone that listens to music is a music teacher or student. So that is just, I don't know. It's like, oh, he's playing a descending chromatic scale here. Yeah. And oh, he's doing this. Like, it's like, you know, really like I, that's just like not interesting. Um, so I just like to talk about what I feel and what I think and give commentary. So if I don't interrupt the song, then the student can say, hey, blocked, deleted, you know, channel deleted. So I'm, I basically, by interrupting the song, I, I am really looking out for the channel. Sometimes I don't do it when the requester literally says, please don't interrupt and okay, I'll take the chance. It's not the best. But then when there's people are like, hey, you know, I'm, I didn't watch your video because you talk so much. You interrupted the song. Why are you watching a reaction video? Why don't you go on YouTube and look up the song and watch it? So that's what I don't understand. But, well, I've heard hundreds of times people have told me, do what you want to do. But it's just so frustrating. I know a lot of people are going to watch this particular marathon because of the songs that it contains. Please, if you don't like interruptions, don't watch reaction videos because the actual reactor is in danger of the channel being deleted when we don't pause during mid-song. So that's a rule. That's literally a rule. It's called fair use. You can look it up. So I just like to be safe, you know, especially on these big artists. Um, when it's like, a you know, somebody that has like 300 listeners a month, like um, an obscure band that nobody appreciates and nobody listens to, but we do. Uh, then it's okay. But when it's, you know, Queen and Shell Crow and the police and Dire Straits, like one of the most successful artists in the world, I would like to cover my butt, you know. So next one, just a little thing that I wanted to say and throw out there for you that don't know. Um, it's very important, you know, for all of the reacting people, reaction videos or channels. Please don't be on their case about pausing and don't um, applaud them for not pausing because they're making a mistake um okay roxy music love is the drug this is from roxy music collection and this is from i guess the year is of the collection when it came out i'll look up the song right now um this is called love is the drug here we go
so different from the Roxy music um, that I've heard before. This is definitely completely different. The one that I heard was um, oh man, what was it? I think more than this Avalon. Yeah, we've done those. More than this, which is so different. This is more like funky punk almost. I don't know, man. I don't even know what this is. Um, it's just very good and I want to like I need to listen to more of this. This is just uh, such a beloved band, um, and I think we have not done enough, you know, from them. So yeah, very good. I love the bass. I love the delivery. It's like this. I wouldn't call it even punk. This is just more like I don't know. Let's just listen to it. Let's keep. Let's keep going. Place in the single bar, face to face. It reminds me a little bit of like David Bowie, I guess, early David Bowie. And um, like, it's, I don't know, it just sounds like experimental in a way. And also, it reminds me of um, Talking Heads. But we just did the full Talking Heads, like their most um, famous album, the one that is all like, you know, made out of loops and stuff. And it's very repetitious. But the. I think it's it was very revolutionary when it came out. We did the whole thing, and after 11 songs, we were a little bit tired of the whole, you know, kind of looping thing. It, it didn't remind me of that, but Talking Heads is just like this experimental band that I always mention when I hear something that's a little bit more out there. You know, this just sounded very, I don't know what to call it, but it was certainly very good. You know, they were definitely onto something. It just had like, I don't know, like it had like horns and the bass was like, I don't know. It was like literally like David Bowie before he became more commercial, you know, before the 80s and stuff. 
I don't know. Definitely very good. So, okay, so let's stop the video. Uh, this is going to be a very long marathon because just to cover, you know, my tracks, I'm going to do Hello, It's Me. This is a... Uh, this is what JK told me. Like, if you're going to do an extra song, why did you do Todd, who was a teacher? And then do one of his best. And so I'll do that. I'm going to do Hello, It's Me. But I'm going to do a second song by Todd because sometimes I need two songs to dispute a block. And I'm sure this is going to get blocked. So just so we can all enjoy it, I'll, I'm going to have to make it a little longer. But I, I do need a break real quick. I'll be right back. All right, so the marathon is already over an hour, so I it did not um, foresee this happening, but it did. Okay, we're going to do um, by Todd Rundgren. We're going to do um, uh, oh, Hello, It's Me. And then we're going to do You Left Me Sore from the same album. That way, if they block it, I can dispute these two songs and we're going to be fine. So this is, I guess, the most listened to song by todd um so here we go like i'm i'm happy to really do like one of the greatest hits of of him here we go this is from uh the album something anything 72 all right let's go <laughs>
Very good. Very good. Um, that's crazy that that's like the, oh, wait a minute. I saw the light. That's the, the greatest, I guess when you go on Todd, um, and then the, wait a minute. <clears throat> yeah. That's the second, the second most listened song I did. I really liked it. Um, went on for a little bit too long for what it was, but reminded me of a lot of bands. Um, but I'm not going to talk anymore. Like I really don't want to make it as longer as I have to. I didn't even interrupt, but this is also like a thing with Warner. I really want them to recognize the song because sometimes the thing is when you pause the song with these other, like with UMG and Sony, um, then it kind of like, I mean, it, it's going to get recognized regardless, but with Warner, I'm already gonna like, I want them to notice that this is a Warner song. Um, and since they don't really strike, I mean, I've only heard that they strike movie stuff like movie related content. And since they are in charge of the DC universe and stuff like that, if that gets used, I think that's when they're a little bit more strict with music. They're a little bit more, um, you know cool about that so yeah i'll play another one i'm not gonna comment too much on this because like i said i think it's been going on way too long this marathon i i guess i did talk a little bit too much but hey you know but um yeah i my comfortable i i am the most the most comfortable i'm i'm at is like 47 40 nine 50 minutes max because then it's 25 minutes of music and 25 minutes of me talking i think that should be enough you know for a marathon like under an hour but when it's over an hour like it's not gonna get views for the same reason but yeah i'm just gonna get let this play and then we're gonna end the marathon and i hope you did enjoy all right <laughs> so this is you left me sore here we go <laughs> oh, one, two, three, four. Love is infectious. <laughs> I'm falling oh, one, in love with the singer. Two, three, four. One. <laughs> Please, one, uh, two, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Love is infectious.
I loved it because it sounded almost like an outtake because of the beginning, you know, the little mistakes. I love when they leave that in, you know, um, because they could have, you know, deleted it, but it gives it a more private experience, almost like you were there, you know, it's super cool. Well, I guess that's it. I do have to go. Uh, I'm actually like late. And so that's why. I just got carried away. This is very good music and it's a very good theme. Maybe let's make a second part, you know. Um, I don't know. JK, he's the guy in charge of the ideas of marathons. Um, that's just like, I guess, you know, a thing that a lot of uh, people like to do to, to grab a theme and go with it. I love it, you know. It gives me something to talk about as well. But yeah, no, these bands were all like top notch, but... Um, yeah, I guess I got a little bit carried away, but I hope you still enjoyed. Thank you so much for being here, for watching, you know, for watching the whole thing. If you're still here after an hour uh, and 20 minutes, then you're really a fan. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.